Hi, welcome to Excel Lab video tutorials. In this video, we'll demonstrate how to use parametric modeling to customize the response of a differential system. To motivate the problem, let's look at the example that we are going to use. Suppose we have this second order system that many of us are familiar with. It's a mass damper system. And we have simulated the system for the following values of the parameters. Zeta is the damping ratio and omega is n is the frequency. So for these values, we obtain the following response, which indicate that the system is, is underdamped. Our objective is to customize the response so the system is near critically damped. Demand that the displacement peak, referred to as the overshoot, occurs at exactly 0.2 at the peak time, which is t equal to. So we want to actually transform the response of the system from this behavior to the following behavior by finding values for zeta and omega n. In fact, the process is straightforward and fairly simple, and it has three steps. First, we simulate the model once using some guess values for the design parameters. Next, we have to define constraints on the system response that we have obtained. We define these constraints by the aid of criterion functions. Finally, we drive these constraints to zero to find the optimal values for the parameters using the nonlinear solver NLSolve. It's very important that we understand the criterion functions. Criterion functions allow you to compute or extract a property from the differential system response. As we all know, differential system response is not a single number. It's an array of numbers but a constraint has to evaluate to a single number. So we have to find somehow a mapping between this array of numbers and the single quantity or number that we want to constrain. And criterion functions provide us the means to do this. We have three criterion functions that we can use. The last two are similar. One of them applies to ordinary differential systems and the last one for partial differential systems. We're going to actually spend a little bit of time just to understand how these functions work and how you can use them effectively to impose constraints on the system response. The first criterion function is ArrayVal. It has the following interface. You select a set of data from your solution. It could be a one number where you don't need any of these second two arguments. Or it could be an array of numbers or a set of numbers. And then you can manipulate the set to compute a single number. You can do this by specifying a, a local formula that applies to each element in the data set, followed by applying a global operation that applies to the entire set. So for example, if we wanted to compute the maximum of U1, we could simply select the column for U1 in the solution, which is in C column C3 to C23, as you see here, and apply the operation maximum. Uh, for simple operations like maximum, minimum, and mean, you can simply pass strings. Another example is we can compute the mean of U1 again. And uh, for the global operation, we can pass the formula mean var1. It's a convention that any formulas passed in the global operation or local operation, it has to reference the variable var1. Likewise, we can ca compute the absolute maximum of a range by passing a local operation, the third optional argument. Uh, the second criterion function that we can use is called ODEVAL. This function applies to output of IV solve and BV solve for ordinary differential systems. It uses a calculus operation to compute a quantity from the solution, and it has the following interface. Basically, we pass the range for the independent variable. It's always in column one, uh, and then the operand for the calculus operation, and generally this is either a state variable like U1, U2, or a formula implicating either of those. And then the operation could be uh, any of integration, differentiation, or interpolation. There are some optional parameters and some required parameters for the operation. For example, if you are interpolating, you would need to pass a point of interpolation. You can also pass optional parameters to control the algorithm. This is all described in detail in the help page for ODEVAL that you can access from the website. Uh, in fact, uh, I can show some live examples in uh, Excel for the purpose of illustration. So I have solved actually a simple uh, differential system here for a pendulum already created the array here using the variables theta and omega that I've named for my variables here. So uh, for example, to find the maximum value for theta, all I had to do is invoke the array array val, specify the column for theta and the operation max. If this is a static value, but it gives us a control over the solution that we can later use in constraints. 
and updated dynamically during the optimization. Uh, in the second example here, I'm finding the absolute minimum of omega. So in this case, I'm using the optional argument to, to pass a, a, a local uh, operation, which I define in H14 as absolute var1. And then I'm using the minimum here for my global operation. OD eval works differently as we described. For the same system, for example, to find a derivative for omega at t equal 5, I select the range, which is the free variable for t1, the column for t1. Uh, my operand here is simply omega because I'm just differentiating omega. My, der my calculus operation is differentiation, so I identify this by the label deriv. And I'm differentiating omega at the point 0 0.5. I can also pass a formula for the operand here. For example, here, I'm integrating the square of omega instead of omega. So I define the formula for omega square and I pass here the formula instead of just omega. We are going now to actually show how to customize the response of the system in Excel directly. So what I've done here is I've defined some variables to make the problem simpler. I've defined my parameters, zeta and omega. I've named them as you can see here. I've also defined the variables for the system tx and v just to make everything you know in one place and easy to access. I've also defined my initial condition variables x and 1 and as you can see here for my variable x I reference the initial x variable here. This actually allows me to use initial x as a parameter because now it's assigned a variable. Uh, I've also defined two constants here for my target designs like the overshoot and the peak time and I list my equations here for the system in terms of my variable names now which makes them a little bit more readable. I simulated the system once for the default values shown here for zeta, omega n and the initial displacement. We're starting from rest and I simulated the system once here as you can see with IV solve passing the system variables and the uh, time domain 0 to 12 where system is simply the uh, range for the equations and variables is my defined variables here. We uh, plot the uh, solution here and our objective to uh, modify this response. So the uh, displacement has a minimum value of minus 0.2 and it occurs exactly at time equal to. So the system is more or less critically damped. To approach the problem is we need to look at the solution and then define constraints on that solution so we, so we can actually achieve our objective. So uh, there are multiple ways we can define these constraints. One obvious way is to restrict the minimum value of the displacement x to be minus 0.2 and also to demand that it occurs at t equal to, as simple as this. So how do we actually do this with criterion functions? It's actually very simple. My first constraint here selects the uh, displacement vector from this array, which in column J2 to J41, and apply the operation minimum. So that computes the minimum value of the displacement and I'm using minimum because as we see here the displacement is negative so, and then I want to compare this to my overshoot which is minus 0.2 this is my target value so this is my first constraint the difference between my target value and the minimum of the displacement I my objective is to drive this to zero by varying omega and zeta my second constraint is I wanted this to happen at exactly t equal to now if we look at the solution here, we find that actually we do not have a value for x at time equal to. Although we could customize the output to have a value of x exactly at time equal to uh, and use the same array val to extract this value, here we are going to simply use interpolation to calculate the value of x at t equal to. And this is my second constraint. I'm using ODE val. I'm using uh, the operation interpolation. And as you can see, the first argument for ODVL is the free variable x. The second argument is x, which is my variable of interest. My operation is the interpolation. And the value of interpolation is peak time, which is I've defined here as 2. I could also pass a constant 2 here. So this ODE val call will, will compute the uh, displacement at t equal 2. I want to drive this constraint to 0 because I want the displacement at the peak time of 2 to be exactly minus 0 0.2. Having defined these two constraints, all I need to do next is actually solve these constraints for my variables. I've allocated this array and uh, in this array I insert my nonlinear solve formula. The first argument is simply these two constraints. My variables are the parameters zeta and omega n 
and I'm also requesting to format the output so I'm going to run this again and it computes the solution for me as zeta and omega n with pretty good convergence in 10 iterations now what I can do actually is I can go and update these variables using the new values here and replot the solution which verifies for me that I've gotten the response that uh, I've showed you here before. Let's try another example. We can verify this towards the end. Uh, the next example is instead of using omega and zeta I'm going to use the initial displacement which is initial condition for the problem and frequency as desired variables and I'm also going to change my constraints. Uh, uh, my objective is still the same but I'm going to show that there are multiple ways you can constrain the solution. Here I'm going to actually impose that the velocity is zero at time equal to because as we see here the derivative is zero which is uh, which means that the velocity is zero. Now although I have the velocity available for me in the solution here but for purpose of demonstration here I'm also using ODE val and differentiating the derivative instead of using V. So my first constraint differentiate the displacement at time equal to. My target is zero for this. My second constraint here is the same constraint we've used before, which is implies that the displacement itself is minus 0 0.2 at time equal to using ODE valve. Now I repeat the same call here, but now notice the only difference is my constraints now are the new constraints, and I'm also changing now the initial x and omega n. Again, I can run this to compute the new solutions. And it gives me a new value for the initial x and omega n. Before we conclude this example, let's verify our objective is met once we use the new calculated values for zeta and omega n in the first exercise. So what I'm going to do is replace my initial values for zeta and omega n by the new computed values and then recompute my solution and then replot it again. So I'm going to select this again. And as you can see, the behavior has changed and now we actually have uh, the overshoot occurring at zero, minus 0 0.2 at time equal to. This concludes this example. You can find several more examples for parametric modeling on the web page under parametric modeling and you can read through those which uh, demonstrate the process for additional problems. Thank you for watching.